I would like to encourage you to make your own tools. With wood prices these days, you can't afford tools, but you can make some of your own tools dedicated or cheap or for whatever reason, you can make your own tools. Remember that. I'm going to show you three tools that I think are awesome and what they cost is scrap of wood and a simple screw. A lot of wood and a simple screw. Now I'm going to take this screw. I'm going to put it into the face of this board. And it's no longer just a screw and a piece of wood. It's a marking gauge. I can set the distance by screwing this screw in farther, taking it out a little more, and I can mark a piece of wood with it. You can mark siding with it. If you're the overlay of your siding, you can do anything you need to mark. You can mark with this. Simple. You can make it fancier. This one, I sharpened the. I actually flattened that out, and it's sharp enough to actually cut the wood fibers. And I'll show you how to set this up. If you want to do a dovetail or something, you take a block of wood like this, unscrew this so that it's set at that depth. So I know that that screw is set at the depth of that wood, the thickness of that wood. And I can take, and then, Use that as my knife mark to cut my dovetails. And as you can see, that lines up perfectly there. The back is, I, I actually set it a little deep so that I could have something to plane. So you can cut your dovetails with it. That's always fun. Now here's a fancy gauge and it has two pins in it. As you can see, that's for making mortises. So if I want to make a mortise on this, I would set my gauge, center it, pull it, and it marks two lines. I don't know if you can see it because they're really fine. But you can simulate the same thing with this. Just add another screw. Look. This is awesome. This is my this is one of my funnest funnest things ever. Now I have two lines that it's making. And it'll cut through the grain. That wasn't centered, but you get the idea. So there's a simple tool you can make with just a block of wood and a screw. Alright. The next one I want to show you is a stop for your miter saw that's adjustable so you can do repeatable cuts and it only costs a piece of wood and a screw. Now this screw, I'm not using a drywall screw on this, you can but it's a little bit better if you have one of these. This is a 32 thread per inch screw, I like using those because if you turn it one full turn, it goes one thirty-second of an inch into the wood. If I turn it two, that's a sixteenth of an inch. If I turn it four, it's an eighth of an inch. So I can know about how much I I'm adjusting it every time I turn it. So I'm going to go over to the miter saw and I'll show you how I use this. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here I have mount. I just I, I put a screw in the back and a clamp on the top just to keep it from wiggling around too much to the sliding part of this miter saw fence, so I can make rough adjustments 
this way. And then I can turn this to make fine adjustments. Now I'm gonna set this up and then let's cut something, I don't know, over like 13 inches or something. So I roughly set this to 13 inches. And I butt my stock up against it. And I'm gonna make it just a little test cut right here. Okay, now I'll measure that and see how far off we are. And that looks like almost exactly a sixteenth of an inch. We're short. So, sixteenth of an inch, we're short. I need to push it that way. A full two turns. Let's see if I can do this right. This one turn. That's two turns. And I'll make another cut here. And now I'm splitting that line. So I can take that. Let me cut this off here real quick. One. Two. And you can't even feel where one stops and the other one starts. So that is a great idea for a screw and a block of wood. Now the last one is my favorite. It's the funnest. My favorite and the funnest. And I don't even know what to call this thing. What did I call it? Uh, a gauge or some measuring device, caliper, I don't know. But what I've done is I've sharpened that screw to a point. I've added a couple of nuts, tightened them down so that when I turn those nuts, the screw itself actually moves because there's no head to turn anymore. And I can add a little block of wood that slides in this groove and I use it to tune up my saw. And what I'll do is I will turn this screw until it touches a tooth on this side. And it's touching. And then I slide it over here. Move that tooth back over here to see where it touches. And it looks really good. We just set up this saw, so it should. But, so you can make tools to set up your tools with just a screw, simple screw, a block of wood. The sky's the limit. Yep. What do you think about that?